1996, you did have a rivalry with Hunter Hearst Hemsley, Triple H, as we know in today's world. And was there any problems with that involving, and we mentioned the click earlier, with the click? Because, again, heading into this, it seemed like Triple H was fighting, he fought Henry O. Godwin, which I love that name, Hog. Get it? Hog. Um, and then he was moves on to you. Like, was there ever an issue with the competition he was taking on, especially yourself? No, there was never an issue because I knew I wasn't going to beat him because he was already in the click. And, uh, you know, I used to call those guys the protected species. They were, you, you weren't going to beat them. And, uh, and I told Vince when we came up with this idea for me to work with him, I said, I know I'm not going to beat him. And, uh, I said, but, and we did the, the when they had the idea, cause I wanted to turn heel and I wanted to cut my hair and change my appearance and turn heel. And when I said that, it was like Jim Ross kind of jumped out of his chair and said, well, how about if we use the haircutting as part of the angle in this thing or something? When. Triple H eventually cut my hair on superstars. And I, I said, look, that's fine. And I'll do it. I have no problem doing that at all. As long as somewhere down the line, I get some kind of revenge. I know I'm not going to beat him. I know I'm not going to cut his hair, but somehow we come up with a way for me to get revenge. And then also in the end, of course, full circle, I want to turn heel. And there, of course, one of many times Vince McMahon would go, of course, absolutely. You know, we're going to do it. Well, let's do it, he'd say. And half the time, that shit wouldn't materialize. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, but that's how it came about. Technically, didn't you? You did beat him at the 1996 Royal Rumble free for all, and you were number 30 in the Royal Rumble, and he was number one. But that was, I guess, a storyline mechanism to get Triple H to be number one and last the entire time. Yeah, basically, it was to make him stronger. And and I, <laughs> if you and if you look at it, he hits me with brass knucks and gets disqualified when the acting president at the time, Gorilla Monsoon, came out and reversed the decision. So people always say you were the first guy to beat him. I said, yeah, I beat him by disqualification. I mean, it's like right. I never Duke the Dumpster never pinned anybody that was a star in the WWF, um, but. They did it uh, to get to that angle. And it was always interesting to me because the big blow off was that in your house match. And in the end of the in your house match, he hits me in the face with my own garbage can lid and pins me. And I just remember when they were telling me the finish, I was just thinking, why wouldn't Gorilla Monsoon come out for that one too? And just reverse it. Adding logic to an illogical situation. Huh? Exactly. And it <laughs> didn't matter. <laughs> It's That's a, so funny. Like, this is the way because this is the way we want to do it. Yeah. Okay. No, it's, I've been watching wrestling at least since 1992, never stopping once. And there's always those moments you're discussing of like, wait a minute. So why did this time the president came out and saw the brass knucks? But this time when he's watching the TV, he doesn't see a gigantic trash can top. Exactly. So. Yeah. You know, that's it, it led to my frustration at the time, which, you know, ultimately would culminate with me leaving the WWF. You know, they I, I, I was saying I was wanting to go home and then they told me to go home and, you know, it all just kind of came crashing down in one instance in 1996. But. Yeah, I mean, I was just getting frustrated at that point, and uh, yeah, that's kind of how it went down. 